There is a massive wealth transfer going on right now, and it's a huge opportunity for you. The baby boomer generation owns something like $78 trillion in wealth. That's T trillion dollars in wealth and 10,000 baby boomers retire every single day. And the reason this matters to you is that almost 20% of these boomers own small businesses, many of which you can buy with little to no money down without qualifying for a bank loan. I'm going to show you which businesses make the most sense, how to find a great business, and then how you can use the cash flow of that amazing business to then pay the seller and create a sick income for both you and your family. And in case you're new around here, my name is Paul David Thompson and I run a business called Real Estate 101 where we teach the fundamentals of commercial real estate because that's all you need to build your empire. I also bought Real Estate 101 from my partner, Peter Conti, who is a baby boomer. He's stepping back in the business, and as a Gen Xer, I'm stepping into the business. And I use this very same strategy that I'm gonna share with you to buy this business. So let's get down to it. Let's start with which type of businesses make the most sense. First off, you want a simple business that already has an established stream of income. So we're not looking for super complicated high-tech businesses that take a ton of very specific knowledge to run. No, instead we want easy businesses to manage that create tons of cash flow because we're gonna use the cash flow from the business to help us buy it from the seller. And ideally, the business comes with a piece of real estate, and I'll explain why that's so important later. The types of businesses that meet this criteria are things like a laundromat or like an RV park, a car wash, maybe a simple warehouse, self-storage, a mobile home park, and even apartment complexes, which is what we specialize in. These are simple, boring businesses that come with real property. And the best part is they are already up and running with consistent streams of cash flow. That's imperative with this approach. You're basically buying a future stream of income in exchange for taking on the day-to-day -day management of the business. You'll have a bonus tip about why management is so important at the end. Okay, so now that we know what type of business to buy, let's talk about how to go about finding them. I think you'll be surprised just how easy it is. I suggest starting at a website called Crexy, short for Commercial Real Estate Exchange, Crexy.com, and it's not from a business broker. Crexy.com is kind of like a, a Zillow for commercial property. And here's a little nugget. Real estate just happens to be another type of business. When you go to Crexy.com, you can filter on the words owner financing or seller financing. And then the filter also allows you to search for property type, uh, location, super important, and then days on market. Your search will give you several properties or businesses that are for sale in the marketplace right now. You can save that search and get alerts when new listings pop up later on if you want to. The tool makes it really easy. Crexy is a relatively new resource. It used to be much harder to find available commercial properties that are for sale. Crexy's made that much easier. Now let's talk about how you can use the cash from the business to buy the property. A good book to learn more about this concept is a book called Buy Then Build. It explains this in much more detail. Based on your search, you now have contact info to call the broker or seller You'll be provided the income and expenses for the property. And like any business, you take the revenue minus the expenses, and that's your net profit. Or in commercial real estate terms, we often refer to that as net operating income. And this is important because it tells you how much cash the property is generating over the last year after factoring in operating expenses, which are things like property taxes, insurance, maintenance, staffing, management fees, etc. I like to tell sellers that I'll buy this property for the list price if you're willing to make this work for me. I need to be able to pay your monthly payment, seller financing, and then afford to make a little bit of money for myself. That only seems fair, right? So what you're doing is you're looking for a situation where you can buy an existing cash flowing asset and then negotiate kind of like a limited down payment situation in exchange for making payments from the cash to the seller. And then you'll take over the headache and hassles of managing the property and the business because remember, these folks want to retire. They're ready to play golf in Florida. This is probably not a listing that popped up yesterday. This is a property that's been on the market for three, six, nine months, even a year. It's something like a mobile home park, an RV park, a storage facility, in a secondary or tertiary market. So it's not gonna be like in Atlanta or Houston or Orlando. Think of 
the little surrounding markets around there, like Tyler, Texas, or Gainesville, Florida, or Macon, Georgia. You're effectively buying a business, and it's too small for big money to come in and buy it, but it's also too much for just a looky-loo to go buy. This is something in the order of 500K to like maybe as high as $5 million businesses that need a full-time management team. That baby boomer who's owned this business for something like 20, 30, maybe even 40 years is ready to retire, and they have a big tax problem if they sell it all at once in cash. You're solving a huge problem for them if you take over the business, save them a ton in taxes, and then give them monthly payments that fund their retirement. I actually once bought a package of properties just like this from a super sweet couple here in Arkansas where I live. They actually moved to Arkansas from New York many years ago to live a slower pace of life, but they kind of kept their accents. So when we would meet to talk about the business, they would meet for coffee. <laughs> And they just, uh, they're the sweetest people you did, nice people you ever meet. And for five years, I've been making them payments on several properties that I bought from them. And so what I did is I bought the properties and then I set the payments to them on autopilot in my banking system. And now I promptly handed the properties over to the property manager. And I really don't get involved that much anymore. And I'm telling you that situation is available all over the country and you'll meet the nicest people when you do so. These are the folks who have been the backbone of this country for the last 50 years, like real salt of the earth type of folks. And it's time for them to retire. And now it's our turn, the Gen Xers and the millennials to take over. Should we be so lucky to live a long, healthy life with a small business that's been able to pay for our family's lifestyle all along? The reason we like businesses that have a piece of real estate attached to it is because we're buying something tangible, something physical that we can sell or use as collateral for something else in the future. Having a real estate-based business is really helpful with this strategy. And of course, every investment carries risk. So in the event the business doesn't operate the way we like, or it turns out that we're not very good business managers, there's still a physical piece of land and a building that is durable and retains some of its value. Because of that, sellers are far more comfortable selling to you on owner financing because if for some reason you're not able to make your payments, they can then foreclose on that physical piece of property. It's the same reason banks are so willing to lend on real estate because it makes for such good collateral when they lend money. You see, you can't pick up and run away with the asset. That piece of property isn't going anywhere. You couldn't steal it if you wanted to. So this provides a lot of security for the seller in the event that you don't perform for some reason. If the business collapses around you, they still have a physical asset. Let's cover the bonus I promised about taking on the management of the property. The secret is you don't have to manage that property forever. You probably will at first, especially if this is your first business. You'll be the chief everything officer. You'll take out the trash, you'll do the books yourself, uh, you'll manage all the marketing, you'll do everything so that you can learn how the business operates. Once you start to understand the ins and outs of the business, you'll start replacing yourself and elevate yourself to the manager and do less of the day to day. This is talked about in detail in the amazing book called The E-Myth. If you haven't read it before, I highly encourage you to go check it out. And ultimately you can transition from operator to owner. You can pay a manager to run the business and then you manage the manager in the same way Warren Buffett owns companies, but he's not involved in the day-to-day -day management of things like C's Candies or Fruit of the Loom, Dairy Queen or Geico Insurance. Warren Buffett's not out there selling insurance or candy or serving soft serve ice cream himself at Dairy Queen. So in the same way, you don't have to run every detail of a car wash or a mobile home park or whatever business you get into. As a bonus bonus tip, this is why we love apartment complexes so much. It's because the system to hire a property manager is already very well established. We don't have to build that system ourselves. We can simply plug into an existing property management company and then have them manage the apartment from day one after buying the property. Then our responsibility is to manage the property manager and ensure that they're running things according to the expectations that we have. And this whole situation is a win-win scenario and there's a ton of these opportunities coming up. So whether you are already an experienced business owner or you're just getting started, I don't know a better way to get started with a cash flowing business where you're not having to qualify for a traditional bank loan. You just need to find one business in the hundreds of active listings on Crexy.com right now that are already saying, hey, I'll do owner financing. They're advertising for it openly. If you'd like to learn more about how to build a cash flow business and create wealth using commercial real estate, join our free community group. The link is in the description. And you'll also enjoy learning even more about how to run the numbers on deals just like this with this video that I've served up for you right here.